Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTOG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down Corset 2021 and the top 10 most expensive premium cards within the set. For those of you who don't know the difference between premium and non-premium, premium are any of the showcase, extended art, borderless, so anything that's not a normal card frame on cards, those will be in this video. If you guys just want to see what the normal cards are, so if you want to see like the normal frame, I did a video covering those a while back, you guys should check those out. But without further ado, why don't we break this down? At our number 10 slot, we have Azusa Lost But Seeking. So uh, if you get her extended art version, so it's not borderless, there is a border, it just is extended, it will rake in $15.99 or $21.99. Now, let me first mention something before we go any further. These prices are all at Card Kingdom, and they are all pre-order prices. These are all most likely going to go down, so keep that in mind. But uh, also, obviously, the thing in purple is going to be the foil price, and the thing in black is the normal price. So here we have, you know, fifteen ninety nine. It's a very, you know, this is a very powerful card, both in, not so much in standard, but a lot of it outside of standard. I'm not really going to talk about the power of the card. If you want to hear about that, I did the other video. But I think that it's kind of interesting that this card is still on the list because I think that the fact that it is a commander card, like. It's a card that works well in Commander. I think that actually raises the price of its alternate art a little bit, because I feel like, you know, if you're looking to build a standard deck, you're a lot less likely to bling it out, because eventually that standard deck is going to rotate out, and actually, with the release of every set, the meta changes, so you're probably getting a new deck every, you know, three months, so why bling out a deck? But a Commander deck, that is something that's worth blinging out, so I think that it's a lot more likely that players are going to want a card like this to be, you know, in the extended art version, um... So yeah, just, it's very similar to the normal art. At number 9, we have Fiery Emancipation. Again, I think this one's, I mean, this one I think is going to see play everywhere. I just, you know, you'll notice here that it just, you know, the extended arts are very similar to their actual, you know, card counterpart because there's not that big of a difference. Where we start to see the differences are when we take borderless cards and, you know, the showcase cards because those have, you know, different art sometimes, not in this set. Uh, but the borderless ones do have different art, so it's just interesting to see how you know, the different showcase or the different treatments, as they call them, change the value. So moving on, we have Liliana Waker of the Dead. So this one's a little bit different. This one is the borderless, which means she has completely different art, which yes, it is very different art. Uh, and this one's at $19.99. And you, you know, in the actual, you know, top 10, and at the very end, we are going to compare the non-premium to the premium. You know, she is on the list on there, close to the bottom, but you'll notice here that her showcase form is nowhere to be seen, which is just kind of interesting. It's like, if players are going to buy an alternate art, they want the better looking one in terms of it being borderless, and I actually think that makes a lot of sense, and the fact that all the Planeswalkers have showcase frames, I think is going to be a, you know, cause the showcase frames to be less popular, because which, you know, you can buy the normal Liliana, or or you can pay extra money for the showcase one. So most people are going to go for the regular Liliana, but the people who do go for the showcase or the borderless ones, well, do you want one that has, you know, a just different border or one that has no border? And so I feel like these type of cards are going to do better, and I think that's one flaw with how they did showcase cards in this. Next, we have Chromatic Orrery. Uh, this one's, again, just extended art, uh, which means it's not going to be that different from its normal form, $19.99 or $29.99. Again, I see this more as a commander card, not so much anything that's going to see play in standard, but yeah, it doesn't look awful. Uh, and I think artifacts are some of the better looking, you know, extended arts, because I think some of the extended arts look a little sketchy. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the whole stretching the art thing, but uh, yeah, $19.99. We have Terror of the Peaks, again, just extended art, so it's not going to be that different from the normal ones, but moving on from here, we get something a little bit interesting. If you are comparing this at this moment to my previous, you know, top 10, of course, at 2021, you'll notice that a lot of the cards are shifted much lower on the list. Terror of the Peaks was one of the highest cards, but you'll notice something interesting as we move up the list. Starting here, we have Grim Tutor, so this is the borderless version, so $39.99 or $89.99 if you get it in foil, and so this is a mythic, obviously, but uh, the ex I think this is some of the best looking, you know, I like it better than the showcase, I like it better than the extended, just the whole borderless treatment is just great, uh, so, you know, you'll notice here that the, I don't know if there actually is an extended, I don't think they ever talked about if this has an extended art version, but you'll notice if there is one, the extended art version is not here. 
followed up by this, we have Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Now, this is the showcase frame. So this is the first showcase frame to show up here. Uh, I think it's also, you know, it is very, not borderless, but the borders are very, like, clear and... It just, I really like the way that this card looks. The bottom of the frame looks really nice. I love it much more than the Chandra frame, which I know a lot of people love it. I just not a huge, I'm not a huge fan of a fire. I just think this card looks really nice, but you know, we also have this version of it, and it's like, which version would I rather have? Now, this one's a little bit weird, you know, we have the art going above the frame, but under the mana cost and under the set symbol, and even the text moves out of the way, so this is just a very interestingly formatted card, and I think this one is probably worth more, and you'll notice that it is worth the same dollar amount, but the foil is much more expensive, which is kind of interesting to see. Next, we have Teferi Master of Time, and this is the showcase frame, which, again, mm, this one I'm not a huge fan of. I'm also not, you know, not a fan of it, but just not a huge fan of it. If you get this in foil, that's worth $99.99. Now, there are four different versions of this art. You know, the art is just slightly different in each one, and you can tell based on the collector number, but they are all worth the same amount. There's not one that is worth more than the others, and I don't think this has surprised anyone. Number one is Teferi Master of Time, and what's interesting here is that you'll You'll notice the Fairy Master of Time is worth $59.99. So that's first off a very you know high price, but you'll if you compare it to something like an Ugin, you know, the foil price is lower. And if you look compare it to the previous Teferi, the actual price is higher, but the foil is lower. And if you compare it to the Ugin in general, Ugin the normal price was the same on each of them, but it's different here. So it's just very interesting to see how the pricing is done. This is more a look at Card Kingdom, but uh, it is interesting to see how throughout, like, even with Liliana lower in the pack, you know, you said, you know, her showcase card wasn't on the list at all, but here, both the showcase and the special art versions are also here, so it's interesting to see what people are going to value these at, uh, and maybe this will be the first time I do a look back at the prices, so maybe closer to when Zendikar Rising comes out, I'll look at the prices of them now and see how they've changed. Um, now, one thing I'd like to talk about, I don't know if I actually talked about this in my other one, but it's kind of nice to not have a Simic Mythic at the number one slot. It has been the number one slot since Eldraine, and it's kind of nice to just have it be mono blue. Of course, this could be a Simic card, but it could also be an Azorius card, which, you know, it can be any, obviously, in any deck that has blue, uh, but it's interesting to see blue always at the top. So, why don't we break this down compared to Corset 2021, the non-premium version. So, on the right, we have the premium version. On the left, we have the not-premium. So, looking at the list, you know, the very cheapest thing in the premium is Azusa Lost But Seeking. Looking at the normal list, that is the second to lowest. So, it's kind of interesting to see how something like Elder Gargaroth... Now, obviously, these were the prices when I did my video, so things could have changed, but Elder, Elder Gargaroth isn't even on the list, even though it was above Azusa and, you know... Uh, Liliana jumps around a little bit here too, around Fiery Emancipation, and Chromatic Ori kind of dips down in price, and Ugin overpassed Grim Tutor, and so it's just interesting to see how these prices change, even if they are changing in exponential rate. Uh, what's also kind of weird is that, like, Teferi, you know, I mean, if you look at it, generally it's like, looking at the prices, they're just a couple dollars, you know, if you take the normal price, make it a couple dollars cheaper, and then double it, that generally gets you around the same price uh, and so think about that when you open it it's like is or when you're gonna buy it it's like you could buy almost two of the card for the price of a premium foil and i just or not a premium foil foils are much more expensive but just generally i obviously when you're looking at it uh the showcase and the borderless and the you know all of that extended those are not worth it unless you are really going to like keep that deck forever so if you're building a standard deck i highly advise you do not buy the extended art unless you have a decent amount of expendable income but even then like it's like okay if even if you have a million dollars to spend on magic wouldn't you rather just get more cards rather than just blinged out cards i, I don't know that's just kind of my stance on cosmetics although you know when it comes to digital cosmetics i kind of changed my tune which is kind of weird but Either way, that's just, you know, the top 10 list and my thoughts kind of on cosmetics and why I think they're a place where they are and just my thought on them in general. If you guys have any thoughts on it, leave those in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.